or did the club just leave out? I don't know. Anyways, y'all, the club was only there for a couple hours, right? Blacked out again, and I didn't wake up until somebody was like, shot for shot for shot for shot. I'm like, like, let's go, let's go. Like, like you ain't even drive me nowhere, Uber. And you took all my, you took my money? Jesus it's crazy. Read it, read it, intro. Read it, intro. He fine, he fly. You know it's Captain Kyle. What's up, y'all? It's Malachi, Captain Kyle. Welcome back to another vid ski, man. Another red ski. And as you can tell by the title, this is gonna be the story time of when I almost died. <laughs> Cause that sounds so like, I'm laughing about it, but low, no, like for real. I almost like, you know what I'm saying, y'all? The story time is about one of my drinking experiences that turned up into me going into the hospital. And let's get into it. I don't like that light. Perfect. Oh, also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and um, share this video if you're new. And let me find a quote of the day for y'all. Yeah, hold on. The tragedy in life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goals to reach. By Benjamin E. Mays. We're going to start this story time off with, y'all, I have learned my lesson from the story time. If y'all feel like y'all judging me in any type of way, um, this is in the past. And this did happen a while ago. Actually, it's been about a year now, I want to say. So, yeah, y'all, we basically going to just go ahead and um, tell the story. I'm sharing this really because it can help somebody else out. Let's get into it. So, starting off, y'all, I did have my drink, drink here and there and everything like that. And as you can tell by the story time, I definitely have, I have my drinks here and there. So, story time really starts off like... A normal like weekend in my life so college I go to I basically get we get Fridays off so Thursday is really like our Fridays and then we got Saturday and Sunday so that's like what a three-day weekend a three and a half day weekend okay cool so we start the story time off it's Thursday night going into Friday I just got out of classes and everything I probably did like most of my work and Usually, me and my friends, we like to go out, you know, to the little clubs or whatever around here. Usually around this time, like, you know, it's it's March or whatever the case is. I just got back from spring break. So, you know, I've been definitely getting way more lit. Y'all seen the spring break story time. If not, click that side. One of them sides. And so, basically, the reason why I say that is because after spring break, I kind of build up a tolerance to alcohol to a certain extent. Back to not having that immediate access to it kind of like had me like drinking more but not realizing that my tolerance is actually way way lower now that i'm not really drinking like that whatever the case is we like we like what's the move what's the move what we doing and you know of course we was like oh we finna go to this club right so i was like all right cool that sounds that sounds fun we, we can do that and then you know they were talking about it at the party but we wasn't sure just yet we were just like we're gonna go to the main club so we go to the main club and you know by this point, I want to say, like, we was like, we finna buy some drinks at the bar. Now, the bar, the way the bar is, it's kind of shady. So, they be saying they serve liquor, but sometimes they just really be, like, serving, like, juice. And then be saying that they gave us, like, a drink or whatever. Or they put, like, really cheap liquor in it. Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. I can't really tell you. I don't work at the bar. I don't know what they be doing behind the bar. But all I know is that I was, like, you know, buying drinks, me for me and my friends and we buying drinks and we drinking of course so we drinking drinking whatever the case is and i'm like i'm not feeling nothing so you know what i'm saying i go get another one and then another one and then i'm like all right cool i'm chilling so i don't i still don't feel no buzz but i'm like i'm not gonna keep buying buying cups seven dollar drinks at the bar and they're not doing nothing and they're not even giving me a little tipsy you know what i'm saying so when that kind of happened i really was like i'm gonna just you know what I'm saying? Like vibe out at the party or whatever. My friends, they smoke. So regardless if they drink that night, they still got some type of like influence going on. I don't feel like I'm as loose as I could be because I haven't had like a drink or two. You don't need liquor to be loose. You don't need liquor to be yourself. But I just was like, let me have a little fun. And I felt like adding alcohol to the equation wasn't a bad Jesus idea. Okay. We like, you know, we, we partying, we chilling, we having a good time. We like turn everything like that. And of course the, the party get packed. So we like chilling, we vibing some more. And then next thing you know, a fight break out. We like all got kicked out the club. So we so we walking out and it's maybe like 
Maybe like one. Like if we've been there for like a, at least an hour or two, but the fight broke out and usually the club going to two. Or did the club just leave out? I don't know. Anyways, y'all, the club was only there for a couple hours, right? And so I was hearing mention this about an after party and my friends were like, oh yeah, we down, da 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 And I'm like, all right, bet. So we walk outside after the club closes and we like walk to the gas station. We hungry and everything, so I'm like eating wings because I had bought wings right before the club closed. And we walk to the gas station. We go in the gas station and we get like these little like drinks, like the little, I don't know, like 32 now. Me, three girls, and then my other guy friend, and we just all like and sipping on the drink or whatever. And we like, oh, I'm like, oh, let's go to the after party. Now, by this point, the girls are like, we don't really want to pay no more money. Dude, it's 11.37. Why are people making so much noise? The girls are like, we don't really want to pay no more money. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were just at this club and whatever the case is. So I'm like, cool, but like, I'm going to just buy the Uber and everything like that. And then they said that at the party, free to get in or it's $5. Like, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just do it anyway. Let's have fun. So they were like, all right, bet. Since you buying the Uber, like, we're we going to come. So I pay for the Uber. We all hop in the Uber and we ride out to the after party location or whatever. Now this after party location is like a lounge that's like up the stairs. I don't know, it's like weird how it's set up, but it's like in a factory area. Like it look like there's a bunch of factories around or whatever the case is. Then we end up going in the club, right? And you know, we waited in the line for maybe like 30 minutes. Then we get up there and the dude is like, oh, y'all all gotta pay $20. And we like $20. We thought the after party was free. We thought it was this amount, this amount, or whatever the case is. And so my friend, she going off on, on the dude, like the little party bouncer or whatever. And the dude's like, all right, cool. Like, you know, Jesus like just, Christ. just go. So she pulls us all in or whatever the case is. We all go in the spot and we turn, we lit. Now the, the club packed out and you know what I'm saying? Like they found seats or whatever. So me, I was like, oh, it's $5 shots at the bar. Like y'all want shots? And they were like, yeah. So they was like, give me money or whatever. And we went and we got shots. And I'll tell y'all, the dude had the little shot glass. He literally poured a full shot of that in each cup every time. And I didn't go and catch y'all. So I'm like, okay, bet. Like, this is really good. It was like $5 Patron shots, $7 Hennessy, something like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm the one securing all the drinks for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And we go, we like tossing up. I tossed it back. I'm like, cool. I go back, give me another one. So I stay back. And then I'm like, cool, I'm vibing. It's been like a couple minutes. I'm like, all right, I'm finally starting to feel a little something. So I'm like, I'm going to go back and give me another one in a little minute. And then I'm going to be turned for real. Now, y'all, this is when the BS starts to happen. I say that because by this point. Is he done? Okay. So, yeah, by this point, like, you know, I'm just not starting to feel the drinks or whatever. And the drinks that we had like in the cans, I, I was drinking on that too. So I'm really like, I'm good or I'm chilling. So this is kind of what starts the tumble effect though. So, you know, a couple minutes later, I go to the bar, I get another drink and like, you know, I'm taking my time or whatever. And I'm just taking a shot. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like I'm lit, I'm turned for real. Like, like I'm at a good pace or whatever. I'm not, I'm not drinking too fast. At least I don't think y'all. I was drinking too fast. Because he poured the whole shot cup, that's actually really two shots in there. You only supposed to pour halfway for a shot, which I didn't know that at the time. By this point, me drinking on them cans was probably like two shots. Then me having them three three um Patron shots, like them three full Patron shots, that's like what? Eight, I'm at eight drinks by this point. Now y'all, for me, my limit is eight. Like, I'm really not supposed to go past that. So. Me and I really thinking I was because I'm like, oh, I took three and then I had like a little mixer. I'm probably at three and a half, so I'm good to go. Like, I could still drink a little more later if I feel like it. So, you know, we good. We turn, we having a good time. They playing the good music. Like, they not playing the trash music that was at the first function. We chilling. So, next thing you know, we all got to use the bathroom. We going to the bathroom. Like, we, we swapping. And then next thing you know, somebody break a glass table at the lounge. So when they break the glass table, of course, we all get kicked out again. You know what I'm saying? We getting kicked out or whatever. I'm waiting on my friends and they over there chatting at the, the DJ booth, talking to the DJ. 
So the D them and the DJ talking or whatever, he was like, it's hypnotic and mad dog. I don't know what mad dog is, y'all. I figured out it's MD2020, but he was like, it's hypnotic and mad dog. And you know, you know, you you can have a little drink, y'all can have a little drink, but it's that mad dog could catch up to you. That mad dog could catch up to you. So I'm like, shit. At this point, I'm already like at the limit. Yeah. Making no sense to take another shot. So I take the other shot. We leaving out the function, and I go and I grab the big, like, the table had this gallon of Tito's, like, sitting there. So I grabbed the gallon of Tito's. Why I did this, y'all, I don't even know. By this point, like I said, I'm gone. Like, I still remember what's going on, but I'm like, I'm like toe up on school. I'm not thinking about, oh, you don't need to drink no more. I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I'm only at four and a half shots, five shots, we good. So I'm like, you know, take the Tito's, and I like stuffed it in my shirt. <laughs> and we getting in the Uber and we, we laughing, we having a good time in the Uber. And then my friends, they like, oh, like, pass the bottle. So we like taking shots. The Uber the Uber lady was real cool or whatever. And you know, I had took like maybe two more shots in the car, just talking, whatever. This is when she just starts to go down even further. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's going downhill even further because now I'm like, what, like maybe 11 shots in at this point. Um, 12 shots maybe, I don't know. And now we back on campus, but we didn't go home at this point. Next thing you know, another friend group I was in at the time was like having something going on in the building, like one of the school buildings. And we just all sitting there, it's more like a chill vibe. So we all bust in there drunk as hell. You know, of course we laughing, we turning up, we having fun and we just like joking around or whatever. And that's when stuff started to get real, so. By this point, I'm blacking out. I'm going in and out of state, out of conscious state. Um, when I got out the car, I, I barely remember like walking to the building. I just remember like walking and my friends being like, no Malachi, it's over here, it's over here. So we go that way. And then when we get that way, we like walk it in and everything. And I remember just busting and laughing. I'm like, what y'all up to, right? Just, just talking like, at this point, I'm drunk out of my mind. I don't remember most of what's going on. I'm going in and out. Um, and like, after after me asking what y'all up to, I blacked out again and I didn't wake up until somebody was like, shot for shot for shot for shot. I'm like, like, let's go, let's go. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking it's cool to like continue to drink. And honestly, at this point, I couldn't even control myself. Like, when I tell you, I was, I was like, I was, I had no recollection. I was blacked out. Like, honestly, I don't even know how I, I was like able to even move or nothing like that. When I was speaking to my friends the next morning, they were telling me like, they were like showing me videos and there was like videos of me clearly just drinking out of the bottle. And I didn't even know I was drinking out the bottle, honestly. Like I was literally blacked out at this point. So me having a bottle and then being mixed with blacking out just really created a horrible situation for myself. Like, like literally, I could have, I could have died. Like, honestly, at that point, like, so. By this point, I was told that I had ate my friend's weed. Like, she was rolling up, and I was like, "Let me see that." And I just picked up the whole blunt and just. Why I did that? I don't know, y'all. Like I said, I'm blacked out. So everything after this moment, I really don't remember. This is off my friend's recollection. So, they were like, "You just were like." Rough, rough playing, arguing with everybody, and then, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, like, you was just, you was like, you was doing the most. So, eventually, I'm, like, trying to go, and I ended up, like, walking out by myself, you know, drunk and all, blacked out and all, and I'm, like, going upstairs, downstairs, and I'm, like, all right, y'all, I think I'm ready to go. And, you know, I guess eventually I got help to, like, walk back to my dorm. But what ended up happening is, as I was walking out the building, the building had so many stair stairs that, you know, I was like, I can't even, I, can't, I, I can't, I can't walk. Like, I don't even know what's going on, I don't see nothing. So by this point, again, this is all of my friends' friends' recollections is, I'm like upset, I'm starting to yell at everybody. I don't know what's going on. And, you know, next thing you know, I guess I got into a fight. I guess I pushed one of my friends, so. And next thing you know, I was tackled to the ground, by this point, it's raining outside. I'm wet and everything like that. Um, my friends are trying to hold me down. I'm trying to fight everybody. Do I know why? I don't know. They said I was just yelling out like random stuff. 
and next thing you know y'all I basically um I just remember being muddy and then the rain hit my face and it sobered me up a little bit and police were already called so they well really the ambulance so the ambulance came out and everything the ambulance is like asking me questions I'm still blacked out but at this point I'm in and out and I'm just talking like just talking to the police and to the fire firemen and my friends are like trying to hold me up and everything like that and then I just remember they were like you got to get in the van so they put me in the stretcher <laughs> they literally put me in the stretcher y'all and then they haul me in and I just remember I was looking up and I see everything going on and I'm just like yelling like I don't remember what I was yelling about I just know I was yelling like that like I was just yelling and the, the fireman just came and he just calmed me down he just like press press my hands here and he was like just relax like just relax and so from there I ended up getting transported to the hospital um once I got transported into the hospital I just remember like you almost there like we can take you to the hospital but like and so we get there we walk in and I just remember like seeing nurses and they were like helping me like take my shirt off and yeah y'all like at that point I don't even know what's going on I know I blacked out again temperature my camera hot all right y'all I'm back what did I leave off I just remember by this point after blacking in and out I just remember getting to the hospital seeing the nurses help me take off my shirt um after that I basically blacked out again when I was able to gain consciousness for the next few seconds, I basically was in the bathroom. I don't know if I had to pee or what. And I just remember the nurses like talking about like, oh, he's like over the limit, da 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 da. And I was like, they said it was juice, they said it was juice. Blacked out again. Next thing you know, I just remember like feeling my body like sit in a chair. And I'm just sitting in a chair and I'm like sleep but I'm not asleep because I'm hearing everything going on around me. But I'm just like sitting there like like in front of the whole entire like hospital. When I say the whole entire hospital, I mean like I'm sitting at the front where people are brung, being brought in from like the paramedics and you know, nurses walking around, nurses at the desk, like they're literally watching me right there. I'm like just going in and out of consciousness with that. And then next thing you know, like I feel like I gotta pee. And then the next second, like, I realize I pee myself, but like, I'm still tired. I still feel this feeling of like, tiredness, so I ended up dozing off again. When I woke up again, I basically was just like, there, and I like, I felt like I had to really go use the bathroom. So y'all, by this point, like, I'm, I'm finally up again, and I'm like, able to move, and I'm like, asking the lady, I'm like, can I please use the bathroom? And she's like, sure, let me just take such and such off of you. And so she takes it off of me or whatever. And I get up and I walk to the bathroom and I go and I look at myself in the, in the mirror and I'm like, what's going on? By this point, I, I guess I felt like I was in some type of like, I don't know, some crazy movie or something because then I just start ripping off the, the needles that were in my skin, like as if I was in Breaking Bad or something. But there was like one here, there was like one over here connecting like one in here somewhere there was like a whole connection like it was like here and connected to here like together and then it was just like all over y'all there was like a little thing on my finger my heart a heart monitor and i just remember like ripping it all off and i'm like bleeding real bad on this arm so like i'm pressing down on it like applying pressure to stop the bleeding and then like eventually i guess they realized i was in there so long that they kept knocking on the door like hey like are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm still peeing. And they're like, okay, they were about to walk in on me. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I got it off of me. And then next thing you know, I'm like, hey, do you know a kid? And she's like, I know a kid. And I'm like, oh, yeah, can you get my cousin? I'm not going to say her name. I'm going to cut it out. But I was like, can you get, go get my cousin? She's like, your cousin? All right, I got you. I'm going to go call. I'm gonna go call your cousin. So she brings another nurse over who was my cousin's name, who has my cousin's name. I'm like, no, that's not her. I guess she don't work here. She don't work here. So she's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm like walking, I'm like moving. I walk in, I'm like moving y'all. And I'm just like stressing myself out. Cause I'm like, what's going on? Like, I'm like, where am I at or whatever? And so then I'm walking around and I'm like, 
looking around and she's like, you want your phone back? I'm like, yeah, I want my phone. Like, here's your stuff. She's like, here's your stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm looking and she's like, just come sit down here and come eat. Come eat some food. And so I'm eating and I'm just like, I'm looking at the door and I'm like, is it daylight? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm in my head. I'm like, oh, okay. It's probably like 11, 10 o'clock. Like, it's not bad. And then next thing you know, she's like, it's two o'clock. You've been, you've been here for like, you've been sedated for eight hours. So I'm like, what the, f I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, sedated? Eight hours. And my mind just automatically like goes to the crazy stuff. I'm like, I'm sedated for that long. Like, I didn't, I mean, I knew you could be put to sleep, but like, I didn't think I would have been put to sleep when I went to the hospital. And then to find out that like, I don't even remember most of the night to like waking up in the hospital and I'm like, I'm like here for like un until the afternoon. I'm, I was like really like worried at that point. Cause I'm calling, I'm calling my family. I'm like, um, I need somebody to come get me. Like I need da da da. They're like, okay, okay. We trying to figure something out or whatever the case is. The nurse, she was, she was a nice lady, but I still was just ready to go. Cause I was, I was so stressed out about the whole situation. Eventually, um, I, I got an Uber call for me. I tried to get in the Uber. I was like, just say you my cousin so I can go. And so the lady's like, are you his Are you his relative? And he's like, no. And I'm like, this motherfucker, this snitch bitch. I was really, I was really upset. I wish I would've gave him zero stars cause then he still drove off and he still took my money on my account. Like you ain't even driving nowhere Uber and you took all my, you took my money. It's crazy. Anyways, by this point, I'm like apologizing to the next I'm like, I'm super sorry. I know I probably gave y'all a fight. I'm like, you know, I don't mean to give y'all a hard time and everything like that. I just, you know, I just, I'm really scared of like needles in the hospital. And she was like, it's no problem. Like it happens every day and everything like that. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like I said my piece. And then luckily my cousin came like two to three minutes later. And so when he came two to three minutes later, he came, he picked me up. And as soon as I get in the car, I'm just sitting there and it, like, it smells like pee. So we both literally rolled down the window and we just talking about like the night and like what happened and everything like that. I'm still feeling like, like under the influence at this point. I don't know if it was either the sedation or the liquor or a combination of both. All I know is I just didn't want to be in the hospital and I was just like talking. Like I literally was just talking to talk. I get back on campus. I literally hop straight in the shower. I wash myself up. I'm on the phone with my grandma. And next thing you know, I go back in my room and I'm just like, I hop in my bed, I go to sleep. I wake up, I'm in so much pain, like all over. Um, fall asleep again, wake up, it's the next day. And then I'm like up for a little minute and then I fall asleep again and I don't wake up until like later that night at like 8 p.m. So by this point, y'all, like, this is really just the end of the, the drunk night, but this is basically, like, the after effects. Um, with that being said, I did have some great friends. They came and visited me. They still, like, made sure I ate or whatever the case is with everything going on. Um, shout out to Duran. And, yeah, they basically just filled me in on what I missed out on. Um, I had to right some wrongs. Cause I really was like blacked out and I did some crazy stuff. I had like a little bit of guilt, but I was kind of more like embarrassed that all of this happened. So from there y'all, I basically just, that was just, it got me to the point where I learned my limits. And that's basically what I want y'all to learn from this video is when y'all drinking or anything like that, first off, it's okay if you don't want to do substances. It's okay if you don't want to drink. It's okay if you don't want to smoke. Being under the influence is not always cool. And that's okay. Like, it's okay not to be under the influence. You know, you can make mistakes in your life. Like, you know, it really can be a lesson taught. Luckily for me, God was by my side. Um, I had a 0 0.321 alcohol level that night, which means I could have I could have fell into an alcohol induced coma and possibly even lost my life. With that being said, y'all, like if this video at least helps one person, that's really all that I want. Say for me, it was the misuse of alcohol. Always drink responsibly if you're going to drink. And yeah, like thank your friends. Um, 
be grateful for the people in your life that you know show up for you in the times of need show up for you when you're not in your best state and continue to support you and continue to show no love loss. I really appreciate my friends in that instance. I thank them for forgiving me, for continuing to be my friend after everything that went down and just, you know, getting me help. With that being said, I don't want to hold this video on too long. Um, thank you for watching your favorite superhero on YouTube, Captain Kai. That's me. And I will see y'all when I see y'all.